Now, let's look at a gentle way. Um, I'm, I'm in private practice since 2009, and it is far different to all the many nights and days that I've spent in labor ward. So yeah, in a way, it was a reality shock, a check. Um, it was a shock, reality check. You do your own deliveries, every single thing. All the hours of that is your responsibility. There's no one there taking over after 24 hours. You just continue. If it's two or three ladies at once, sometimes go. it happens like that. So, so a gentle way to cesarean delivery. Lots of groups going on board, the nice uh, people, Better Birth Initiative, WHO, UNICEF. You all know about Breast is Best and the whole um, initiatives um, that is undertaken to, 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 to promote uh, mums to, or to help mums to breastfeed as soon as possible after, after giving birth, baby friendly hospitals. And everything was, was put together to improve the, the, the easy one of the two, the vaginal birth, okay? And, and I think we've, we've come a long way and we've made a big, a big difference, but, but nothing has really been done until the late, in the late uh, 2007, 2008, around that time, when people started to think about cesarean sections, how can we make it a gentler way, a more humane kind of experience for the mom? So I think there's, there's enough reasons why it should be done. It, in a way, we try to mimic a vaginal birth, and we promote early skin-to-skin -skin contact, and there's also a new concept to me is physiological resuscitation for the baby, because I don't know about you, but we were used to deliver that head and start to suck vigorously uh, in the mouth and the nose and all of that. But there is a concept of physiological resuscitation, uh, and that is tactile stimulation associated with a slow, purposeful delivery where you position the baby on a prone position on the mom's chest and you allow the child, the little one, to clear up its own um, airwave through vagal stimulation and then um, all the tactile reflexes and all of that, the paraspinal muscles that triggers normal breathing. Um, and then with uh, another reason, of course, is, is to involve the parents to be active participants in the birth of, of their child. Now, before we go further, um, I have a patient <clears throat> who's had four cesarean sections, uh, and the last one was, was twins. I don't know where I got the guts from, but anyway, she, she's quite a special woman. Um, she, she, I asked her, how do you compare your first two experience at a different hospital, where it was the traditional way where the baby was left between the legs and she just saw the child like waving at it and then it was taken away to the nursery versus the gentle approach that, that she experienced with me the last two years. Now she unfortunately it's her own words, so it's in Afrikaans. I apologize for that. But I wanted to do I wanted to show you how she described the, the two pro different processes. So the first one, the two first pregnancies that ended up in Caesarean she she was described as an operation. She said it's a clinical process, and the bonding only started with the child when she was back in the room. And we all know that you've got a drip and a catheter and a lot of pain, and according to her, bonding only started on day two with the first two. Where with the last two pregnancies, it wasn't an operation. It was a birth. She, she says that she always wanted to have a normal delivery, but it wasn't possible, and she really like the, the gentle way, because she felt that she was, was part of it. Where theater was usually a cold and clinical pl place, that moment when she saw the, the child's head coming from her own body, that was all that mattered to her. She said she felt involved with the whole process. Bonding started in theater. And she also remembered that the tw first 24 hours was, was definitely as difficult as with the first two. But she also remembered that she was more at peace and not as anxious um, in the recovery reward after the gentle, natural uh, cesarean section experience. So the article that I'm referring to was published in the BJOG in 2008. And what they describe is a straightforward cesarean procedure. It's nothing different. It's just a few gentle touches that comes in that, that makes it different. They did it only on elective cesarean, uh, did they only performed it for, for elective cases. It was all healthy women and it was non-compromised singletons. In the last three years when I started doing it, it, is, it was a learning process, but at the moment over the years we've decided the only contraindications would be your acute emergencies, obstetric emergencies, abrupt placenta, uterine rupture, if your mom has got eclampsia, 
uh, fetal compromise, and had un one in the last three years, one unwilling mom that didn't want this. Um, but for the rest, that is the, the method that I use. Um, now, just the reality from my practice, I compared three, two groups of data, uh, three years that I did compare. I started with this procedure mostly in, the, in November 2014, and if I look at that time, I had, in that three years, I, I'm not a busy obstetrician, um, I had 286 deliveries, and in the years from 2011 to 2014, the same period, I had 277, so it's almost the same. But you can see in the beginning, I, I'm a bit little, but just a little bit proud about that 5% difference. There's <laughs> 5% difference in terms of, of, of cesarean section incidence, 73% versus um, 86, uh, uh, 68. Um, and the funny thing is, or to me, is that the same patient that had wound sepsis in the first round was the one that had wound sepsis in the, the second <laughs> And she's obese with, with a lot of other comorbidities. So it's actually the same patient that um, gave me wound sepsis. And that's it. They, they, uh, we, we are. It's, it's the, the, the good thing about being on your own is you know your patients, you know how to take care of you, them, you know about sepsis, you know about complications, and, and you can actually, I think, prevent quite a bit. Um, so let's look at the how, how to do this. Like I said, it's a straightforward thing. It's just a different way of thinking. You start with a re re regional anesthetic, a spinal block. You, once the block is in, you let the patient lie down, you undress her sleeves, and you cover her chest. Um, and the ECG leads are placed at the back and um, just below the left breast. So that's a, that's a way how the lady is lying with her head. And the bed is then tilted in the lateral position. <clears throat> it's a sterile procedure. Normal cleaning of the drapes and the patient and all of that comes in. And instead of a, of a um, screen, the elbow screen, we use drip stands on both sides. I'll show you now. And we put a sterile draping in between. And then the other thing is after we've scrubbed as surgeons and assistants, you do double gloving um, before you start the procedure. Surgical checklist, introduce the team to one another. So it's a very friendly environment. The partners around. We don't even play music. If they want, they can bring, but that's not usually the case. Um, everyone knows one another in theater. Patient in left lateral position, prophylactic antibiotics, just as a normal cesarean. Then I do a Joel Cohen if it's a prime up, otherwise a fat and steel, a muscuff lot of method or sharp, a minimal sharp dissection if necessary. And then there's just a picture on the left hand side with the draping on the two drip stands. Um, the anesthetist in the middle, the father's behind me, or there's his face, the sister and the assistant. Um, then you continue as per usual open the skin and then when you reach the uterus it's a lower transverse segment incision and then when you deliver the head you really do it very gently and there's no suctioning of the nose and the mouth you you just guide the head out you wipe the mouth and the head of the baby and uh, you uh, clean around the wound edges so that the patient is not too scared about the the bleeding and then at that moment when the head is out and the baby starts to breathe you drop the drape so that the mom can see how her baby is in a, in a womb. Um, and you drop the drape and the mom can actually witness how the, how the little one gives its first breath, sometimes cries. And I just gently help, if necessary, to lift the shoulders out and the baby torpedoes itself out of the womb. So there's just a way of, of you all know it, but gently lifting out the head and there you can see the, the drape has been dropped and the mum can actually see how a baby comes through, a, through yeah, from her abdomen. And that's why I think the patient said she gave birth. You know, she, she witnessed it. Um, <clears throat> after that, you, yeah, you can help the, the arms to get the arms out. You support the head. And you allow, I sometimes allow the baby to sit in the mum's womb, free its arms and extend it and its first cry, its first breath. And it's actually so nice for the parents to see how a blue baby becomes pink in front of them as they start to breathe. Let, gently lift the baby out, and that's what they say, walk the baby out, and you put it on the mom's chest, 
um, you pull the umbilical cord free so it's no tension on it and then when it's on the mom's chest you try to put it in a prone position and the parents are allowed to touch it the theater is usually at 26 degrees so it's a warm theater and the mom and the dad the the skin of the mom's chest is available the baby can go on there directly on there and with their hands they can touch the baby sometimes we use a warm cloth to cover it um, yeah here you can see that's just a little bit it's really a slow thing slow process to get that head out it's not a lot of pushing like we used to do the assistant is the contraction maker that doesn't happen it's just to get the head out and then the baby delivers itself actually um, so important differences is the no suctioning and no no pushing down from the assistant side there you can see the mom with a little one on a chest you allow the, the baby to lie on its side or on, in a prone position on the mom's chest. They can touch the child. It breathes and comes pink. You support it on the one side. While all, while all of this, I'm busy here. My assistant usually continue to collect the cord blood. We like to uh, do delay cord clamping. So we wait for the pulsation to stop and then the cord is clamped. The dad can cut the cord, collect the cord blood after that and all the time the baby's on mom's chest that takes about two to three minutes um, and then we, um, yeah the cord blood is taken there's just another picture that that is just such an emotional picture for me there's just something captured in there that words can't describe you know um, it, it does make make a difference um, in, in my experience um, now there's two ways that the pediatricians can can manage it it depends on who you're working with some of them really don't mind some of them prefer that we lift the babies from mom's chest and it is a midwife where they draw dry, uh, dry the baby and warm it on the um, uh, uh, in the over over it heater and um, there they do the IK and the vitamin K and all of that they put the labels on the baby put the nappy on swaddle it and then bring it back to mom and um, then it's, the baby can be allowed to stay with mom for a few minutes. And after that, the baby can leave in the incubator with the dad. And the dad can do kangaroo care up in the nursery while the cesarean section, we continue with that. Or uh, other pediatrician at my hospital really don't mind that the baby stays on mom's chest and they receive all their care there. Eye care, vitamin K, the label, the nappy, all of that. We put a cap on. Sometimes we tie a cap from a towel if we forgot to bring one um, and the baby can have a little bit of a warm blanket some some in the article they suggest bubble wrap can be put over that but the theater is usually so warm that it's not necessary and then once the cesarean is done um, the dad can hold the baby for a moment and then we put the baby the mom over on the trolley and um, then the baby and the mom baby go back on goes back on the mom's chest the baby and the mom can go to recovery ward and the midwife can stay with them as well as the dad we do however have personnel constraints sometimes so it's not always possible to to have it this is the ideal that that the mom and the baby is not separated but sometimes we're lucky enough that there's enough staff that the extra midwife can stay down there do that and this is this is this is very nice it's so well received by patients um yeah, so the baby settles in. Oh, I've done all that. Plus, yeah, you know all of that. How to do the rest of a, of a cesarean? They need it just. So where where would the obstructions be? And I've been working usually on my elective list. I work with the same anesthetist, but they are a group. So when I'm on call, it's the the group um, the the practice that will help me. And over the last three years, I think I've done this kind of cesarean section with with all of them, and they're mostly from the older generation all the practice and they're not resistant um, to them in the beginning it's 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 a little bit frowned upon and the more we do it they see that it's actually so nice and they really been they've been accommodating um, and according to my regular anesthetist he says it works well it, it works well he doesn't have any difficulties administering his anesthetics he, he likes the part that he doesn't have to do all the talking um, with the patient. The patients are actually involved and really enjoying the time with their baby. And um, he says, even if the SATS probe is not on, you can actually, I mean, he can still see that the woman is happy and content and she's not turning blue. So not all the monitoring is necessary. Always machines, you know, has a purpose. Um, and there's definitely less anxiety in the in the theater and yeah from a pedi pediatrician's point of view they have been very supportive in this whole venture 
and according to them, it helps to promote, they are really helping me to promote the, the procedure. And like you said, with the baby on the mom's chest in a prone position, the parents are immediately involved. As a result of that, there's a decreased stress response on the baby's side, there's improvement in the vagal tone, and spontaneous breathing is, is achieved in a shorter time period. And of course, the, all the benefits of skin-to-skin -skin con, uh, uh, skin -skin contact so early on. Uh, you all know that about breastfeeding and immune response, um, bonding and, and decreased postnatal depression. So I've got a video here, but there's far too much surgery on it. So I'm just going to forward it a bit. Then we can quickly have a look. Uh, we're going to forward. Okay, I'll come back. no pushing no contractions and you, th look at that mom's face maybe I don't know if you can see that for it's a very simple thing Beneath this freezer hand. Now, in the meantime, what I didn't say is we, once I've handled, uh, we're deciding if, if the baby stays with the mum, then we just uh, take, take off our extra pair of gloves and if I need to hand the baby to the pediatrician, I just wait for that. And then we just take off the uh, uh, pair of gloves and you are still gloved and you continue sterile. We put a clean drape over that um, drape that's full of blood and it's sterile again. The mum can get a nice cloth to wipe the blood off her hands. And yeah. So yeah, that's um, just the zest of that. Um, so yeah, this is the same patient. I ask her if she um, what the bar can do, um, if if she 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 what if there was an emotional impact um, on the second the two sets of of, of se yeah if she compared the last diseases with the first two, and once again in Afrikaans, she says there is definitely emotional impact uh, that's different in, in a gentle way. Um, nothing can ever, if, if you can't have a vaginal birth, there's nothing that can replace that. But uh, this, this method for her was the closest that she would ever come to giving birth. And I like that third one that she said, in her opinion, the only difference with the birth of, his, of her third daughter was that she didn't come out vaginally. She did feel like she gave birth. Um, and then she says there in the last point, she said um, she's got a very special connection with her third daughter and she believes it's because she was involved from the beginning. Um, she remembers in the days after the twin, twins were born and her daughter that when she looked at the photos, and she, she could remember how they were lying on her, on her breast. And she, she had joy at looking at the blood that was on her hands. It was the blood of her child and her own body. And whenever she told her friends about this, they were all in awe. Um, and yeah, to her it was just an amazing experience. So I know there's elective lists. I know the state very well. But I want to challenge you today to go back and think why not try this in Tigerberg on an elective list? You don't have to do this. We didn't start with this from the beginning. We started small, and the thing grew. And we still have to do many small, yeah, I have to have, always have to evaluate and see what we can do better to make it a better patient experience. But I really want to challenge you to 
like Michelangelo, he saw an angel in the marble and carved until he could set it free. And I want you to, to think about the possibilities of, of trying something like this in, in your, in your, for your patients. Remember, it's not about us, it's about them, their experience, what they take home. Thank you, and good luck. And if anyone ever wants to assist, let me know. <laughs> of assisting Marlena at funny hours of the day and it really <laughs> is a very special experience and I think that um, there's a lot we can't do for our patients here in the state but there's a lot that we can. Are there any questions? I wanted to cry a few times. <laughs> Because I think if only that was for me, you know, um, I think it's only when you have your children do you realise what a big thing it is. And we're so privileged. And thank you for listening to women. Welcome. You might start a catharsis here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think um, we all know the studies about women being happy, whether they give have. Um, a baby by a normal birth or cesarean um, if that's the way they want to. But a lot of women who have caesars, it's not the way they plan to give birth and I think this is a, a lovely way to experience I mean, it. You can see the size, oh well, the amount of cesareans that we have to do and it's, um, it's not always just because they're scared or it's on request. Once they've had a caesar, not many of them are keen on VBAC. So yeah, some way you have to make it a bit more the, the one aspect I personally enjoy when I assist Marlena is the dads cutting the cord. So it takes a little bit of a mind shift for the scrub sister, um, but they, they identify their scissors that they hand over to the dad, and he cuts the cord, um, and those scissors then get put in the non sterile side. Yeah, sterility stays a, problem, uh, a priority. Uh, we don't want. We don't want more sepsis, so you know your candidates. Any other comments? <laughs>